Hi, this is Terence Wu with Hawkridge Systems. This video is the second part of our look at this sheet metal bumper example. In part one, we reviewed three different methods for modeling sheet metal in SolidWorks and determined that the best approach for our bumper example is to use the convert to sheet metal feature. For part two, I'm going to share some tips for using the convert method and finish off the shell of the bumper. The first tip actually occurs before we convert the solid body to sheet metal. Those of you that were really paying attention during the first video may have noticed the split line in the feature manager. Without it, we would have ended up with this. Split lines allow us to turn one face into multiple areas. This is super helpful when you want to split a face between multiple sheets or only want to convert part of a face. Let's back up a bit and create a few more split lines to define some holes. When converting sheet metal, the type of split that usually works best is sketch projection, so we'll start by adding some sketches. Then, the split line feature can be used to project the sketches onto the faces of the model to split them. This time when we convert to sheet metal, we can omit the selections where we want holes. Of course, we could trim the top profile and add holes with cut features instead, but split lines are often quicker and easier when using the convert method. The second tip has to do with the reverse thickness option in the convert to sheet metal feature. When creating multiple pieces which fit together, it's best to check this box so that the sheet metal thickness is added to the outside of the solid body. If we convert all of the pieces with the reverse option unchecked and add the thickness to the inside, we end up with interference between the pieces. This can be a real pain to clean up, so let's undo that and try again with reverse thickness turned on. But what if the solid body represents the outside dimensions of the bumper? In that case, we can simply shrink the body a bit before converting. The Move Face tool is an easy way to do this, and we can simply set the offset value to the sheet metal thickness. Now we can convert with the reverse thickness option on and avoid those overlapping edges. Kind of. Even though we used the reverse direction option, there are still a few areas that need a bit more attention. It's usually easiest to trim these areas once the sheet is flattened out. But if we create a cut after activating the flat pattern, the cut doesn't appear back on the folded model as it gets suppressed with the flat pattern. To get around this, we can use the unfold and fold commands. Unfold lets us flatten out the bends. And while this looks the same as the flat pattern, the key difference is that we get an unfold feature in the feature manager. We can create a cut feature to trim the corner as before. I'll trim this other corner over here as well this time. And I'll mirror to the other side. Now we can use fold to bring back the bends. Because the unfold, cut, and fold features all appear above the flat pattern, the material is removed in both the folded and flattened states. The other tool that's really useful when cleaning up the model is the break corner feature. It's basically the same as applying a fillet or chamfer feature, but it works extra nicely with sheet metal. And that brings us to the end of my list of tips for this video. While I clean up the rest of the interferences in the model, let's run through a quick recap. Tip number one, use split lines. Number two, use the reverse thickness option to add the sheet metal thickness to the outside of the solid body. If needed, you can use the move face tool to shrink the body. Number three, to make changes to the flattened part, Use the unfold and fold commands. And number four, use the break corner feature. I hope you find these tips helpful for your sheet metal modeling. To finish off the bumper, we'll simply mirror these pieces to the other side. Thanks for watching.